Okay, so there are different forms of intelligence. And this is absolutely vital to understand what is going on. My family aren't stupid people. Their conclusions are based on perspective, philosophies, and their forms of intelligence. You know, there's things they can do that I can't do. I don't do brain surgery. I'm not big on business like my older brother. I'm not as good of a software engineer as my younger brother. You know, so there's different understandings that people have. You know, and so we can't just say, well, because they're not able to see this, and to us it seems obvious. To most of you it seems obvious because you actually listen to what I'm saying. You know what I mean? And you actually consider it and you see it all put together. They get bits and pieces and they're distracted by everything else that's going on in their lives. You know, if this was their main interest and they were able to step outside of themselves and look at it objectively, then they would come to the same conclusions that I have. You know? Um, also, one thing that a lot of people don't understand is that um, my dad isn't just see things the way that white society does. Well, I wouldn't really say they go as far as to say that. He doesn't just come at it from a, a quote unquote civilized perspective, if you will. It's hard to describe it, this perspective. But he also feels like he owes something to this country, you know, and that further complicates the situation. Now, I'm not going to go into detail, but to make a long story short, my dad came here during the Nigerian Civil War. And because he was a top student in Nigeria, at least that's what I was told at the time, this country brought him in. I'm not gonna say what agencies or this, that, and everything. I think I've actually told the story in the past. So he feels like he's, you know, he feels a debt of gratitude or, you know, there's different ways to look at it, you know, and that complicates the situation greatly, you know. Um, he doesn't, he's not a big fan of the idea that having come here, you know, by the good graces, you know, by the um, the kindness of this country's heart, you know, being one of the few people probably, <laughs> one of maybe a few hundred people in America's history, no, it's probably more than that, but who have come here, you know, as a result of America's imperialism or their greed or their bigger agenda, you know, their bankism, their crony capitalist agenda. He's actually one of the people who benefit from it and he feels like, well, they were there for me in my time of need. And so, you know, there's that. So when you consider everything, you know, and also his philosophy being, you know, a very uh, non-confrontational philosophy. He'll have his views, but he's not gonna go on TV and say this and this and this, you know, no matter how much he feels like saying that, because that's not his philosophy, you know? So, you know, I think I caution you from coming to the conclusion, the premature conclusion that because his he was unable to see that what he was doing to his son was wrong, that magically, you know, he's wrong about everything else in his life, you know. He's part of companies that are very successful, you know, companies, and they're, they should have been much more successful. They're very, you know, well put together, well researched companies, you know. So the, these non conventional control mechanisms, if you will, that they're using on me, um, He's inclined because of his philosophies and his debt of gratitude, if you will, um, to turn a blind eye to all this. And it probably fucks with his head because there's probably a part of him that says, I wish I could go there with you, you know, but then there's the bigger picture. There's family. You know, a lot of us, you know, a lot of the immigrants have family back where they come from. That's part of the story. You know, that's why I came to the conclusion that one must forsake everything, including family, to take on the New World Order. Because I see so many people, they're doing this for their family. Or at least that's how they justify it to themselves. They say, well, I have family back home. If I do this and they cut off my supply line, my family back home might starve. And these are pretty good reasons. So you need to have the highest moral standard and to pretty much be seen as an extremist in order to take on the New World Order. You know, that's why they, they attack extreme philosophies, because it's very easy to put you in a situation 
in a crony capitalist society, it's very easy where you have to choose between sacrificing everything and doing the right thing or justifying to yourself going along to get along to do what you can, quote unquote, to help, you know, your friends and family and whatever. Okay. So you have to understand the differences of philosophies here. I'm after, I'll, I'll go through it with you, you know, I'll go through it with you. My mother, you know, pretty much everyone in my immediate family is a person of principle to a certain extent. I am the extremist here. Okay, I'm the guy who says no matter what happens, you can torture me. And this is a form of torture what they're doing. They're trying to break me and all the other targeted individuals by intensifying the stress that all of society feels. Okay, like waterboarding, torture. This is the CIA torturing people, torturing people domestically. This is intelligence agencies, the government. This is the gang stalkers torturing people domestically to break them, to break their will. And so they do what they want them to do. They say what they want them to say. They behave in a way they want them to behave. It's the same idea. Nothing about gang stalking is out of the ordinary or out of the realm of what you would expect. It is exactly what you would expect. <sighs> do you think they haven't done it before? Don't be surprised when the people who do what they do, do what they do. Okay? Okay, so what did it take to take on these people? What kind of a view did someone have? You look at my family, for example, and say that it is, you know, a microcosm uh, uh, of society. It is a smaller, you know, it is, you can judge society based on this group of people. You know, study this group of people, you can kind of tell, you know, not accurately, completely accurately, but for the most part, you can tell why society doesn't resist. You know, my family is an intellectual family, smart enough to see what's going on and to make a decision as to whether or not to oppose these people. Okay, you have my dad, who I just explained. I'm not going to go over that again. You have my mom. Now she, her father was an engineer. Her mother's very strong Christian values. You would be surprised that she did not come out like my mother. She has her own take on Christianity. Because she says things like she's, she's only met one real Christian in her life and she's not referring to me. Fine. You know, we don't agree about it. It goes back to what I said. We don't agree about everything, but it, it's pretty close. Um, when you truly look at the essence of our philosophies, there are certain places where we branch out, where I take an extremist point of view. They say, well, and they take a different point of view. Okay. And my extreme point of view, I would argue is more appropriate. Of course, I would argue that. But of course, if you think about it, I'm the one addressing the root causes of the problem in society, nobody else. And why is that? Anyway, so she's more like, She's one of those white people that has a certain level of cultural imperialism that they don't want to admit to themselves. A lot of these people who act in a discriminatory fashion, who have certain biases and prejudices, don't see themselves that way. It's sort of like a subconscious bias. You know, they say, well, I don't hate you for you because you're black. I hate you because your inability to conform to white culture in a way that offends, you know, that, that ends up offending my sensibilities. You know, and that's what it is. I think a lot of police are like this. A lot of politicians, a lot of rich people are like this. They don't see themselves as a racist, but their behavior and their beliefs have racist overtones to say the least. You know, it's the same people thing with people who say, well, I don't date people from this race and that race. That is racist. That's discriminating based on race when it comes to dating. Now, there's a lot of people who say just because they don't want to date you know, the same race or the different race doesn't mean that they're racist. It means that they're racist to a certain degree. Okay. Now you can then argue whether it's okay to be to that degree, but it's still racism. It's still discrimination and which falls under racism. It's racist discrimination, discrimination based on race. Now the true Christian point of view is to not discriminate based on race. That is absolutely a Christian position to take. That is a Buddhist position to take. There's a difference between Christianity and traditionalist thought. Okay? There's a difference. There is a sincere key difference between we're all God's children and you're this, we're this, we're meant to be separate. There's a difference. Okay? There are some things in the Bible that come off as perhaps racist. But when you truly get to the meat of it, it's not racist at all. 
the Jews, in fact, you know, before even Jesus came, were assimilating other ethnic groups into their people. They would go places and they would conquer people and they would take them as wives. When you take someone as a wife, right, you have children and now they're Jews as well. So they're assimilating people. They had a multicultural society in a way, well, multi-ethnic society, a multiracial society, if you will, as they were assimilating people as they made their way to Canaan and made it Israel. So there's a difference, okay? Now, me personally, my personal view is that you shouldn't discriminate on race. With that being said, you know, when it comes to dating or anything else, with that being said, There are times when it is more practical to discriminate on race. For example, if you're going to have a leader of a black movement, it's probably not a good idea to have a white person or any other race that's not black as the leader. You know, this is one of those rare instances where it's actually a good idea to discriminate on race. Um, and also, with, also, I'd like to add that I personally do not want to see different races disappear. Okay, but I follow God first and foremost. And God says, don't care about it. Don't be racist. But, you know, I like having Igbos in Africa. I like having Nubians, you know, for, who are at least Nubian for the most part in Northeast Africa. I like having white people and Asian people. I like these different women. I like their, you know, I don't want one world human race. But I'm not going to go as far as to discriminate or to promote racial discrimination in, da in dating to achieve that. If you get what I'm saying. A lot of people don't understand that. You know, so these things are very complicated, complicated, complicated issues. And I'm going to say one last thing. I do believe when white racists or white nationalists say that there is an there is a plan. Multiculturalism is part of the New World Order agenda. I do agree it is part of the New World Order agenda. And I'm going to say something that you really have to think about, perhaps. Some of the things that the New World Order pushes aren't so bad. In fact, they're OK. You know, they're just using them to you know, in, in collaboration, in concert with other elements of their plan to achieve their ultimate agenda, their end game, you know. But by themselves, they aren't so bad, you know. For example, not discriminating against women, you know, in the workplace is not so bad. If you have a, an accurate way to determine whether women, whether there's a wage gap and women are getting paid less, you know, that's not a bad idea. You know, they should be getting paid based on their skills. Okay, some of the things that they're pushing aren't bad. And then there's other, th but when you put them all together and you tweak them in a certain manipulative way, then they become bad. Absolutely. When you try to force people to do what they don't want to do, you know, and there is no higher justification for it, and you got to be care very careful how you justify, how you uh, uh, um, identify that higher justification very careful there's too much room for corruption and for people with gone complexes and, and other ulterior motives to corrupt everything okay so understand these things understand them you know i'm a very very serious guy i understand you know i i'm gonna end this by saying this you know i saw recently on streetgangs.com it was i guess it was part two of the grandies you know they're talking about yeah when a boxer gets in the ring you know, getting a broken jaw or getting hit and black eye is part of the game. A gang member getting killed and all this stuff, you know, trying to avoid hits is part of the game. You know, I knew everything that they have done and that they will do and that they could do to me, I have already considered. I knew they were going to sabotage my love life. I knew they were going to, you know, before I even heard of gang stalking, I knew how it goes. I know how things go. You know, I understood my enemy very, very well. And I proceeded anyway because I'm a man of principle. It reminds me of Jesus, you know. He understood he was going to get crucified, you know, and he proceeded. Because that's what a man of principle does. And I would therefore assert that Jesus was an extremist, that Moses was an extremist, that Abraham was an extremist. And why should I apologize to a bunch of candy-ass cowards for being an extremist? Thank you. What's going on in their lives? You know, if this was their main interest and they were able to step outside of themselves and look at it objectively, then they would come to the same conclusions that I have. You know? Um, also, 
one thing that a lot of people don't understand is that um, my dad isn't just see things the way that white society does. Well, I wouldn't really say they go as far as to say that. He doesn't just come at it from a, a quote unquote. Okay, so there are different forms of intelligence. And this is absolutely vital to understand what is going on. My family aren't stupid people. Their conclusions are based on perspective, philosophies, and their forms of intelligence. You know, there's things they can do that I can't do. I don't do brain surgery. I'm not big on business like my older brother. I'm not as good as... So he feels like he's, you know, he feels a debt of gratitude or, you know, there's different ways to look at it. You know, and that complicates the situation greatly, you know. Um, he doesn't, he's not a big fan of the idea that having come here, you know, by the good graces, you know, by the, um, the kindness of this country's heart, you know, being one of the few people probably, <laughs> one of maybe a few hundred people in America's history, no, it's probably more than that, but who are the software engineer is my younger brother, you know, so there's different understandings that people have. You know, and so we can't just say, well, because they're not able to see this, and to us it seems obvious. To most of you it seems obvious because you actually listen to what I'm saying. You know what I mean? And you actually consider it, and you see it all put together. They get bits and pieces, and they're distracted by everything else. It's quote, civilized perspective, if you will. It's hard to describe it, this perspective. But... He also feels like he owes something to this country, you know, and that further complicates the situation. Now, I'm not going to go into detail, but to make a long story short, my dad came here during the Nigerian Civil War, and because he was a top student in Nigeria, at least that's what I was told at the time, this country brought him in. I'm not going to say what agencies or this, that, and the other thing. I've, I think I've actually told the story in the past.